continuing on the theme here, we next have speaking for the Lanka, Professor Donald Sadaway. in the Department of Material Science and Engineering. He told me that he participated in the first Latka Hamantaschen debate at MIT, an extraordinary fact since this occurred some 50 years ago. <laughs> he also told me that he teaches a course, an obscure course apparently, called 3091, taken by a handful of freshmen who I believe have the commonality of liking music. <laughs> Professor Sadaway's own research is less obscure and focuses on electrochemical phenomena operative in energy storage devices such as the rechargeable latka and in environmentally sound processes for extraction and recycling of metals from used latka. <laughs> Something that may explain much about Professor Sadaway is that he spent all his early years in Canada. <laughs> on open courseware, or perhaps driving around in his Avanti. If you cannot, try sprinkling latkes in his path and see what happens. Press the away. facility. Um, now the latke on the other hand, that's a modern latke production facility. It's clean, it's silent, it's run by electric power generated by water falling down the hill. This is, this, is, this is the epitome of sustainability. Now which would you rather be consuming? In fact, the, the, the hamantash is such a threat to humanity that the prestigious journal Nature issued this bulletin, I don't know if you see this, what we've discovered about Hamatash, disastrous effects on humanity. This just came out, I don't know if you saw it, it just came across my desk yesterday morning. I was shocked. I think that's what they're talking about. Now, let's turn to something contemporary. We all know about the miracle on the Hudson, January 15th. That pilot landed this airplane on the Hudson River. Now, we know that the National Transportation Safety Board has found that these stalled both engines, and I'm embarrassed to say that they are Kennedy's. <laughs> so thank you, Hazel, for pointing out my origins. But there's more to the story. So let's, first of all, let's be engineers here. So this was an Airbus 320. It was built in France. That should tell you something already. <laughs> it's powered by these engines 
and they're designed to handle birds up to four pounds, but everybody knows that in New York City, Canada geese can weigh over 12 pounds. <laughs> We got a problem here. Now the question is, why did the geese attack the airplane? Why? I mean, there are geese there all the time. There are planes taking off all the time. What happened on January 15th? Why did the geese attack the plane? I have the answer. It begins with this. So we, we know that there's a lot of this sort of activity. And so on January 15th, these are these are these two fellows that are being <clears throat> escorted from the building. I don't know why these people, the escorts, wear these badges with police insignia on them. But anyways, they're getting, they're getting a free ride someplace. And evidently, these people had been feeding Hamantash, the geese, in Battery Park. And what happened was, the geese, having eaten the Hamantash and crumbs, were driven mad, and they attacked the airplane. Look, I have this, you, no one has seen this before, and I got this this afternoon from the National Transportation Safety Board. These are the crumbs from goose number six. This is, <laughs> you can see we have the evidence here. And so the, what the headline should have read is that fed Hamantash and crazed birds attack French Bill <laughs> I'm just reporting the news. I, all right, the last thing I'm going to do is talk about Latka versus Hamantash and advanced energy storage. So for that, I went to my own laboratory. What I decided to do was to take the liquid electrolyte out of a lithium-ion battery and replace it with Hamantash and with Latka. So here, I've got a transmission electron micrograph of what I call a solid Latka electrolyte. So I've put this in a lithium-ion battery, and I've doped it with lithium triflate, and this is the microstructure of it, and you can see the, where we've stated with ruthenium tetroxide, those are the hydrophilic domains and the lithium pathways. And the lock is performing marvelously, and then I put it inside a battery against lithium and vanadium oxide and charge and discharge it at a very, very high C rate, room temperature, 100% solid state. I did the same thing with the Hamantash, and <laughs> since this work it kind of leaked out and, and we think that batteries filled with the solid light the electrolyte could light the world. I mean we, we we could we could harness the energy through the day from photovoltaic panels and reduce our dependence on foreign petroleum. It's just amazing what the light can do. So I mean you know this is this is your choice. Do you want to think about this or do you want to think about this? <laughs> And so the, the, the last thing I want to say is that, um, you know, in, re, in reflecting on tonight's uh, debate, it, uh, it did not escape my notice that, that I'm standing here before you on the same team as Professor Keith Nelson. And Professor Keith Nelson teaches 511-1, but I teach 3091. And we have two people, both from different departments teaching subjects that are side by side, both pulling in the same direction, arguing in favor of the Latka, to which I would attribute magical powers. 